<clears throat> okay. <clears throat> it's y'all ready? Mm -hmm. It's it's nine thirty. Uh, the Brazos County Commissioners will meet in workshop session as follows. Uh, August 27th, 9.30, Commissioner's Courtroom, the County Administration Building. First item on the agenda is a call to order, and the second is a presentation and discussion of the FY24-25 County budget. And I had asked uh, Nina and Katie, there, most of this information that we'll see today was buried in that three-and-a-half-hour workshop we had last week. So I wanted to uh, mm -hmm. have y'all... Uh, really where I think we need to be looking is is at the uh, proposed budget where we're at and then what we do to make it balance. I'm going to turn it over to you. Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. Since last Tuesday, there was recommendation for a few changes. And one of those recommendations, I'm going to go over the changes, um, was to add an additional 0.5% to the cost of living. So it went from 4.5% cost of living to 5%. And as you can see, the first, uh, oops, the first item, additional 0.5% cost of living for majority of county employees. This includes salary, wages, and benefits. It added additional 378484 to the proposed budget. Along with this, um, we are waiting for a quote from collections for clear investigations. What this is, it allows that department to get better addresses, phone numbers, as well as emails for people who owes fees, fines, or restitution. And this is like a, a better way for us to collect our fees. And so it was additional 6000 to the budget. One request was to move um, retiree health insurance from commissioner's court to a different department. And so we decreased the retiree health insurance commissioner's court by $4 million and we increased the retiree health insurance in non-departmental by $4 million. That way you can see a true cost to commissioner's court. Another item, um, we had to transfer an additional $14,540 to the grant fund due to the additional 0.5% cost of living, and this was for juvenile and T the TIDC grant, which was public defender. I do want to make a note up at the top where it says $500. I mean, $5,522. This was an increase to revenues. And this is because we have an ILA with CSISD to support their um, school resource officers. And in that contract, whatever um, expenditures we have in the budget, we match into revenues. And that $5,522 was the cost of the additional 0.5% cost of living. So that being said, it increased our bottom line to the general fund. And this is the same thing that was presented last Tuesday. And this is without capital projects, an additional $22,475,505. Okay. I do want to show you what it looks like with the transfers to the capital projects. On this sheet, you're going to see a negative $98,139,791. This is what the budget is to date, along with the transfers, the additional 0.5% cost of living, as well as the items that we just discussed, the $6,000 for collections and the transfer to the grant fund. So currently we have 90 million in fund balance. And so we're gonna use part of that to help offset this. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to have to review the tax rate to see if we're going to have to, um, what the decisions are going to be for the tax rate to go to proposal. At this point, I would like to ask if there's any questions from the court regarding what has been presented today. Oh, I do have one more um, item that I do need to explain. Um, last Tuesday, we were talking about what positions have been created, bringing the total number up to 1,041. There was one position that was created under MPO during mid-year. And this was for um, a special project coordinator. And of course, it was a grant, so they're allowed to create a position. And so as you can see, it's highlighted. And so it brought it up to 1,042 um, positions that will be created for FY25. I do want to make that note, because that was left off last Tuesday. OK? All 
Are there any questions regarding the additional uh, additions from last Tuesday? Does the 90 million that you talked about in fund balance also include the projected $10 million that we'll have for this year? No. Okay. So, but it does include the amounts on our 25% and all, have, of, all of the other items that we get on. I don't see that sheet here, but the fund balance? we get a Let sheet me. that gives a re, uh, resolution of the fund balance. I could pull what was up present last Tuesday. I just wanted to know where that 90 million number you're talking about is really coming from. Sure. For the 25 percent is 36 million, but let me pull it up so the public can see as well. Gotcha. Oh, it's so small. Let me come up here. Okay, here's the fund balance sheet that the county auditor certifies. Oops, right. That's the 90 million you're talking about there? Yes, sir. Okay, and then that does not include the $10 million projected uh, surplus of general fund revenues that we will have over what, uh, when we finish the end of the year? No, okay. that does not include what's going to be uh, remaining this year. It does include the 5% expenditures that will be left over, but not anything above that. Okay. So that $100 million should maintain all of our uh, required fund balances that we see on this sheet I don't have plus question. give us a surplus of a little less than two million dollars and then that should leave two million dollars in our fund balance in in excess of what we have that are our required items that you see on that sheet the county auditor has not certified what's going to be remaining out of 24 budget and so I'm not able to predict what we're going to have remaining. Gotcha. I understand that um, you, you can't do that, but I'm, uh, I just needed those figures for thinking about what's the appropriate tax rate to uh, propose. Thanks. Mm -hmm. If there's no more questions regarding this, we would like to hand it over to the county auditor to start discussing the tax rate options, if that's okay. okay. When you arrived this morning, you should have had a legal size piece of paper with four different colors on it. These are just tax rate options. The top, the green, excuse me, the very first one is the no new revenue adjusted for our sales tax, which is a requirement for us. The green one is the voter approval rate adjusted for sales tax. The blue one is the voter approval rate adjusted for sales tax and including the 2021 increment available. The yellow is the voter approved adjusted for sales tax and including the 21 and 22 increments available. The, um, It's my understanding that the pink is what the tax rate it would take to raise the revenue over the fund balance we already have. So we have 90 million in fund balance. We need 98. That's what the pink represents. And that also does not include the projected $10 million general fund surplus. No, sir. It, it includes some, the 90 million includes some, but not all. Oh, okay. I thought the. Well, because I, thought, I estimated that I we would. I thought the 90 million was on that page that you showed us previously. 
it is estimated that we will spend 95% of our expenditures. So if you look at it, some of that is part of the 10 million. Well, that's good because we usually, I mean, for the last 10 years, we've never spent more than 90%. Um, for operations, correct. When you look, start looking at capital, it gets a little different. Right. Yeah. Capital, the other consideration capital, we is we spend a, w a whole lot less. But I'm just, I want to just talk about the the regular general fund. These are the things we pay for every year. Okay. Thanks. So I, I uh, what I'm seeing is that um, you've included the $90 million that we estimate for fund balance that we've got in this proposed budget. 15 of which, 15 million is going to fund operations because we're $22 million short just on operations. She was just there. So 50 is going to fund operations. 15. 15, okay. One, sorry, not okay. meaning to yell. Okay. But no, I, <laughs> all right. It's highlighted on the screen in yellow regarding how we're balancing. Okay. That, that's kind of what I was driving at is that we, we use up the $90 million in the proposed budget and we're still $7.5 million short. Yes, sir. So I guess that's why we're looking at tax rates to determine yes. how we're going to what are we going to do about this seven and a half million dollars that we're short? Well, and that's why I highlighted the pink. I, if you'll notice the yes. column increase in revenue over tax year 2023, it's seven million four hundred eighty-five thousand one hundred eighty-four dollars is what that tax rate would increase general fund revenues. It would also increase no, just general fund. Sorry. So the pink line then is is what would balance the budget without, I guess, some of these things added or you already added those in that the potential uh, increase. Okay, they have not, they're not added in here. The only thing that was added was was discussed, the 0.5% cost of living that was okay. additional, as well as the 6,000 um, for collections and for the 14,000 that was transferred to the grant fund, along with uh, what we were discussed last Tuesday. Anything additional to um, that has that needs to be brought to adoption is not included. Okay. So, um, with the, I mean, the pink line shows what would balance without anything added to it. But I mean, I will tell you that um, when I came in as Commissioner in 2003, Randy Sims came in as judge, uh, we had very little f fund balance. And so most of the capital projects that we ran into, we value engineered to try to uh, cut costs down on, on everything to get with them because we didn't have the money to, to be able to actually, maybe in sometimes it was things that we should have done, but we we had a budget, we didn't have fund balance, and so we, we value engineered. That's what we had them do. Uh, Randy's, uh, uh, his, his philosophy, and mine has been since, is that you really need to build up fund balance for capital projects because fund balance shouldn't be really used in, in the operations because that's not something that's going to necessarily be there every year, but uh, the tax rate should fund... Uh, your operations, but if you have money at the end of the year and it rolls into fund balance, that's what you use for capital projects, and that's what we did. Uh, but then, of course, in you know, uh, we were building fund balance in 2014, 15, and then COVID hit in 19 when we were ready to do projects. COVID hit, and and the spending stopped, and we. The capital projects just cut that, closed up. We didn't do anything. We couldn't. We couldn't get uh, contractors. 
they couldn't work. Everybody, once you got somebody in with COVID, they, everybody had to go home. I mean, it was a, it was a terrible time, but all those capital projects did not get done. And now we've got those capital projects that we're trying to catch up on, plus a whole bunch more that, uh, that we're working on. So when I look at it, if, if you're not planning for planning ahead, I mean, you know, there's some that say we should just borrow the money. Every time we need something, we borrow money. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. I think it's much better to plan ahead, try to build fund balance to be able to, to do those projects as you see them coming. And you can look far enough ahead that you know that there are things coming. For instance, um, the courthouse. We know that uh, we've got a new court over there. To get them put into a spot that, you know, long term they would be, it's going to take some remodel for that. I mean, we're looking at whether potentially we may have to add a county court law at some point. That's another courtroom that would have to be uh, remodeled. All of those things, they're not done. Some of that has to, uh, to for that to occur, we've got to move some people out of the courthouse, which is what the, what we call now the 101 building, the old BISD location. That building will, uh, will, will then allow a bunch of people to get out of the courthouse and then we can do some remodel looking forward. I, I mean, we're looking at the jail right now. I mean, they're, they're running well over 800 uh, and seem to be consistent running that. And certainly we need to take a look at the jail maintenance and make sure we're, see where we're at and what it's going to take to to make sure that that's up. But I, I, I can see looking forward that at some point we're going to be having to look at expanding that jail, I believe. I mean, uh, so all of those things I think are in the horizon. And if, in my opinion, if you're a conservative, fiscal, and you're responsible, you take a look at all that stuff and you try to build for it. Um, and that's what Randy was doing before me and I did after I came in was you take a look at what all's coming and you're watching and you're trying to build some fund balance so you don't have to go out and borrow money every time you you're uh, you you see you run up on a project and then you go borrow money I don't like that just my opinion uh, so when I look at this it's it showed the pink line shows where it would balance the budget the rep this tax rate will balance the budget without any other, anything added to it. I, I, would, I would tell you that, I mean, I think, I mean, there's been some, I, I hear some discussion about potential that might get added to the budget. And if it does, then, you know, it's certainly going to be, we're going to need a tax rate higher than what the, the pink line is. <clears throat> and in my opinion, you need to be trying to feel, build a little fund balance, balance because there are things on the horizon that we see, you know, that we know we're going to happen. And if you're not prepared for them, you're behind. And you get prepared in the years ahead, not, not when the time comes that you are fixing to do it. And then you're trying to scramble to, to borrow money when you don't know what the interest rate is. I mean, borrowed money, it still costs you the same. And you've got to pay interest on it, and you don't know what the interest is. And if we've spent our fund balance down, it is, in my opinion, subject to S and P saying, "Well, you're you're riskier uh, because your fund balance has been dropping significantly, and then the, the interest rate that we uh, sell our bonds at may be higher than what it would be if we were as stable as I, as we are right now." All that said, I think as we look forward to not right now, of course, but in the in the the open meeting the regular meeting, when we look at setting a proposed tax rate, those, that's what I think we need to be looking at is uh, where we're at right now, where the proposed budget set, and what the, the uh, tax rate it will do, we will need to support it. And, and, and when, I, when I look at it, uh, adding a penny to the, to the current tax rate, which is uh, 40.097, and I see that's the line just above the blue line. I mean, that brings in, um, I mean, you might tell me quicker and I can see it, but what it will bring in, but it will, hopefully then it would cover 
any additional that might any additional things that someone may want to add uh, at the adoption day or and then have some fund balance at the end of the year that we can then use toward all these other projects that that I mean I see you're they're on they're on the way we're gonna have to do them a tax rate of 0.4197 total would bring in an additional nine million two hundred and six thousand four hundred nineteen dollars into the general fund okay and and I, I you know I've heard the comments about the what the fund balance will be uh, the ten million whether it is or not I don't know I, I think what y'all are doing now you're budgeting at a, at a tighter uh, you're closer to what actual may be once uh, I, I know we've you, I know you're pushing people to spend the money out of their account before we actually use contingency to do it so when that happens that means that there's going to be less fund balance at the end of the year because they're using up their budget that was that they were budgeted at the at the first year so uh, all of those things said I mean and, and we may not have the ten million dollars at the end of the year I don't know we may have I don't have any idea really but we have to base what we're going to do on on a current budget and or and and that's what I think y'all you presented a proposed budget that's very conservative I want to compliment both of you you did a great job uh, uh, trying to hold the budget down uh, as much as you could but frankly we're in urban county and we're growing and we we've, we've got a lot of needs and if we if we stick our head in the sand and say well we'll just borrow money next time we need it rather than trying to build fund balance I think that's a bad policy judge I uh, I hear everything you said I'm, I'm very pleased to hear you say that we're in urban county uh, because that's something that uh, uh, for the last eight years I have uh, uh, tried to get our perspective changed here's what I see is uh, of the 168 million dollars under the proposed under the total revenues for general fund and of the 190 million that is uh, without capital that we sell I'll just say uh, if we typically okay and I put those figures together for you last year and for the year before uh, even during the pre COVID years we did not spend on average 12 percent of what we budgeted to spend but let's mark that let's be more conservative than that let's say it's 10 percent okay well 10 percent of 190 million of what our <coughs> expenditures are in the general fund that's 19 million dollars we're probably not going to spend 19 million dollars of what's in this budget and that's a 10-year trend uh, actually it's a conservative adjustment to the 10-year trend but let's just say 5 million or 5 percent let's say we actually spend 95 percent which we haven't done in 10 years uh, of what we have uh, budgeted to spend in this budget this is without capital projects uh, that's nine and a half million dollars but I don't know how you leave out capital because that is a huge well I understand expense. capitals I mean, all come you, capitals all coming out of surplus I'll get to that well, no, it's, I'll it, get to that capital capital is coming out of fund balance and those types of things but what I'm saying is is because we're talking about using 90 million dollars right but where do you get fund balance the For 90 million that you don't spend in the budget that's where you get fund no, balance. we're collecting everything other than the 22 million if you look at page on the proposed budget without capital okay the, the reality of it is 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 at 10 percent uh, of not being spent of 90% expenditures there's 19 of that 22 million dollars are you with me 
Are I'm, you with me? No. I'm, okay. I'm just telling well, you well, that it. You're, you're, I know day, that you have a point, you and you're trying to, to you don't justify your point. But I would like for you to listen to what I am saying. Any fund balance? That's not true. Well, yes, it is. If you if you spend everything that you budget, then you're not going to have any fund balance at the end of the year. Any extra, unless you, if you had any at the beginning and you don't spend it, then you've got it. Okay. I mean, that's um, simple I'm, economics. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not a clear representation of how we have done things and what the result is because I, for one, am very tired and I've expressed it before, of taking money out of people's pockets that we don't need and we don't spend. So you're saying that the capital projects that we've got online, we don't need? You're putting words and, into my mouth. Well, you're telling you're me, putting I'm words telling into my mouth. No, I'm telling you that we can I afford this budget at the no and new revenue rate. Act like it's not yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. yeah. Judge. Do we need? To, you're you're you're, you're kind of okay. I, you got, I'm not going to do any more bamboozling with you. Do you? Do you have any? You do this every else? year. No, sir. No, nothing else. No, sir. You do this every okay. year. Okay. So it and is. And I'm tired of taking money out of people's well, pockets that we don't up, need and we don't do spend. Do what you need to do. Uh, it's 9:56. We're gonna have a uh, uh, break. We'll adjourn this meeting and then have a break till the next meeting. And it's probably going to take 10 minutes to get everything set up.